Are you asking your prospects in the first 30 seconds of a conversation, how are you doing today? Or how's your day going? Or how's the weather down there? If so, you're actually lowering your status in the prospect's brain. And so today I'm gonna to show you what words not to use that lowers your status, where they view you as just another salesperson trying to sell them something. And I'm gonna show you how to build real rapport with certain questions that get them to view you at a much higher status where they view you as more of an expert. Are you ready? Come over here to this vibe board and I'm gonna show you what not to do and I'm gonna show you what to do. All right, so have you been taught Hey, to build rapport on an inbound lead or an outbound lead or even a cold call and to get into that conversation, have you been taught to ask questions? Hey, how's your day going over there? Or how are you doing today? Or how's the weather over there in Dallas? Or hey, did you see the game last night? And then you start talking about those type of things. Look, I know you mean well and I know you've been trained that this is rapport. But I want you to think, put yourself in your prospect shoes for a second. How do most of your prospects view these type of questions that every salesperson who's ever tried to sell them ask what type of questions? The same questions you are. Ooh, that might not be good for you. Here's how most prospects view those type of what I call fake rapport questions. Here's how they view it. I'm just trying to get you to like me so I can sell you my stuff. That's how most prospects interpret those type of questions, that I'm just trying to get you to like me so I can sell you my product, my service, my thing. Now, why is that? Because I want you to think about it. How many, how many salespeople that have ever tried to sell them anything from a vacuum cleaner to a car to a life insurance policy to maybe cybersecurity to their company ask what predictable questions at the beginning of a conversation. The same ones that you are asking. And if the prospect views you like they view all other salespeople, and how does society view salespeople in large? At a lower status. So when you're asking the same questions that every salesperson uses, they are literally viewing you as just another salesperson trying to sell them something. So they're automatically starting to put you in a category that you probably don't want to be in. Now look, I get it. I know you mean well. I've even had a few people come up to me after a keynote and there'll be a guy, you know, in a room of 5,000 people. They'll be like, but Jeremy, you don't understand. I really care about how my prospects days are going. And I'm like, well, are you really genuinely interested in how every single prospect's day's going that you're talking to? Let's be real. Even if you are, guess what? Your prospects don't think you are because they're used to everybody saying the same questions. Now, I'm not talking about lay down sales. I'm talking about most of your prospects, all right? So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to build real rapport. Now, what do I mean by real rapport? I mean real rapport, getting the prospect automatically into what we call results-based thinking from the very first words or the very first questions out of your mouth. Are you ready? You might wanna write these down. Now, I'm gonna give you some generic examples first so you can plug in your industry. And I'm gonna give you about five, maybe six different industry-specific examples from various industries that you can see how that format looks like. You ready to do it? Let's go. Got cotton mouth in here today. All right, so how do we get the prospect into results-based thinking from the first words out of our mouth, okay? Why do we wanna do that? Because when we build rapport, we want them to view us automatically as more of an expert, more of an authority, a trusted authority, rather than just like all the other salespeople. We want to build our status in the prospect's mind, not lower our status. We use the same words, we ask the same questions that every salesperson asks, we are lowering our status, because. Society views salespeople at a lowered status. We have to raise our status, okay? All right, let me give you some examples. Okay, in this example, let's say this is a generic example, like I mentioned, write this down. And let's say this is an inbound lead. I'll show you some differences between inbound leads, people who book on your calendar, compared to you visiting them on site, maybe you're selling at their home or an office, it's gonna be a little bit of, of a tweak, compared to maybe you're selling virtually on Zoom. This first example, I'll show you Zoom. So when you get on Zoom, you don't want to start off like, hey, how's it going? How you doing? Where do you live? Oh, you're in Dallas. I love Dallas. Did you watch the Cowboys game last night? Oh, you watched the Cowboys game. Most prospects 
automatically starting to lower your status. To see what you're doing, you sound like everybody else. So when you get on Zoom, it's the same foremost. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can, can you. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see it now. Good way, I would tell you, this is a whole other training. If you want them to turn on their video, let's say they don't have the video on, you can lean in like, uh, and you act confused, confused to them like, I, I'm, is your video maybe broken? I, I can't see, is your video broken? Or And a lot of times like, oh, sorry, and they'll just turn on their video. That's a whole other training. But anyways, so you get into there, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, hey, can you see me okay? Okay, good. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna look it down at your notes, okay? Because they can see you, right? You're virtual. A little bit different if you're on the phone compared to, to in the house or in the office. I'll show you some tweaks there. All right. So then you're going to look down at your notes and you're like, and you're going to slow down your tone. Don't say this fast. You give them no time to internalize what you're asking. You get to slow down your voice, slow down the question, and you're going to look down. Okay. So it looks like you had booked on the calendar about looking at getting possible help with blank so that you guys could blank, right? Okay, so it looks like you had uh, booked on the calendar about looking at possible, about getting possible help with your blank so that you guys could blank, right? Now, what am I doing there? I'm repeating back the end result of what you sell, okay? Think about that for a second. What is the end result of what you sell, okay? Getting help with what? So that you can repeat back what the end result of what you do is. That's gonna vary from industry to industry. I will show you different industry specific examples so you can get a concept and then write in yours, okay? So that you can blank, right? And you're gonna say right at the end. Now the prospect was like, yeah, right. Now this, what this does is it automatically gets them into results based thinking, okay? This is very key for you because we wanna get them out of cost or price based thinking into results based thinking, all right? Let me show you some examples so you can see how it works, okay? In this example, let's say if you sold B2B, I'll show you some B2C, B2B examples. And let's say that you sold business consulting. You sell for a company that comes in and helps, let's say SMB types of company, puts in, put in better systems, maybe better operations to really help scale companies so they can generate more revenue, they can grow the business. So look at this. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Now slow that down, don't say, can you hear me? Can you see me? Sounds awkward. Can you hear me okay? Oh, okay, Georgia. And can you can you see me? I, your video. I don't think your video's working. I can't see you. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So it looks like I'm going to look at my notes. It looks like you had booked on the calendar about looking at possible about getting possible help with putting in maybe better systems so that you guys can scale the business, right? Okay. So it looks like you had booked on the calendar about looking at possible about getting possible help with putting in better uh, systems, better operations, so you can grow the business, right? Now, what did I do there? I'm saying they're right. Now, what is the end result if I'm selling business consulting to SMB type of companies? Look at here, I'm gonna explain this. Why would I use possible? Why wouldn't I be more assumptive there? I'm gonna show you why. But what is, if I'm selling business consulting, what's the end result? better systems so that they can scale. What's the end result of selling business consulting to smaller companies? So they can scale the business. That is the end result. See, when I get in them into the end result, results-based thinking, they will start to view you more as an expert. Now, there's a lot more to this after this. You can't just ask one question like this and like, this is an expert, this is an authority. There's a lot more after this, but I'm showing you the start of that. Okay, now, why would I use the words possibly on the calendar about looking at possible, about getting possible help with your blank? Why not say you had booked on the calendar to get help with better systems? Because if I do that, especially if it's with an A-type personality, some A-type personalities, which a lot of business owners are, are gonna say, well, I, I'm not ready to do anything. I'm just kind of seeing what my options are. If I assume this, about getting help with putting in better systems so you can scale, right? A lot of A-types, not all, will be like, well, I didn't say I'm ready to buy today. I'm just kind of looking at the options. But if I just put the word about, poss about getting possible help, that is a neutral word. So I neutralize any type of sales pressure in that conversation, that first question that would trigger sales resistance in their brain. 
just a way to do that. I'm neutralizing that word. See the end result, remember, better systems so they can scale the business. And then I say, right? At the end, they're like, yeah, right. Okay, let me show you a few more examples, all right? All right, let's say if you sold solar. You know, business consulting, we, huge industry we train. Solar, massive industry we train. It's probably the, I wanna say one of the top five industries we train out of 161 different industries. Okay, let's say this is an inbound lead. You're meeting them virtually. Now we train solar door to door and virtually. I'm looking down at my notes after I ask him, can you hear me, can you see me? Okay, so it looks like you had booked on the calendar about looking at you know, possible ways to maybe lower your bill and, and lock in your rate, right? Now, if I'm selling solar, what is the end result of solar? The end result is to lower their bill and lock in their rate. See how I'm automatically getting that prospect into results-based thinking. Looks like you'd booked on the counter about looking at possible ways to lower your bill and lock in your rate, right? Lower your bill and lock in your rate, right? Look at my hands visually. That's a whole nother training I could do for you, right? So that's the end result. Let me show you a few other examples. Are you ready for this? Okay, let's say if you sold life insurance, okay? Huge industry, I think it's the first or second largest industry we train now, tens of thousands of agents we train. Now, let's say that this is an outbound call. Now, let's say it's a new lead, okay, that just responded like an hour before, and let's say they responded on a Facebook ad. Now there's gonna be tweaks for this industry and a lot of industries if they respond to an ad on Facebook and it's like an hour ago compared to them, let's say if you're an insurance, you would know, they fill out some type of mail card they get in the mail and they mail it in and then somebody calls them a week later. Completely different way we would start off this conversation. I'll show you the differences here, but I want you to see how we're getting them into results-based thinking from the very first questions out of our mouth. Hey, is this John? Remember, this is on the phone. Hey, is this John? Yeah, hey, hey, John, it's Jeremy Miner from XYZ. Looks like you had responded to an ad on Facebook a few hours ago about at looking at maybe some different options for like, you know, financial protection for the family when something does happen to you, right? See how I'm doing that? That is a brand new lead. If it's an age lead, we would not do that. You would get crushed in this industry. Looks like you had responded to an ad, so I'm reminding them they responded to an ad on Facebook a few hours ago about looking at maybe some different options for coverage for the family when something happens to you, right? Yeah, right, okay? Automatically results-based thinking. Now, if let's say they filled out some type of card, mailed it off, you're talking to them to a couple days later, and let's say that you bought the lead, so you didn't generate the lead off social media, you bought the lead from a lead broker and they might have sold it to 20 other agents. If you're in that industry, that's, as you know, pretty common. So I have to handle it a little bit different, all right? Let me show you the differences there. Hey, is this John? Now, remember, look at the end result here. Hey, yeah, hey, Sal, yeah, this is just uh, Jeremy Miner. I had a second to get back to you. I'm licensed with the state here in Arizona, and I received a request that you put in about possibly looking at like different coverage options where you looking at anything specific or just wanting to look at all the different options. Now, let me break down what I just did there for you. Why would I use the word just there? Okay, a lot of sales trainers will say, if you use the word just, it diminishes what your message is not important. The problem is, is your prospects don't care if your message is important or not. You're a salesperson and you have zero trust and zero credibility when you first call this type of lead who's being called by 20 other people. You don't have any trust or credibility. Your prospects don't give a rat's ASS if you are important. So the word just in this context, now there's some contexts you wouldn't wanna use just, but in this context, when you're calling an age lead or if you're cold calling, the word just implies what? that they should already be familiar with it. Yeah, it's just Uncle Bob, you know, call him back. Like, see, that's I'm applying that they should already know me. That lowers your prospect's guard. In this context, this is good. In other contexts, you wouldn't use the word just. Yeah, it's just it's just Jeremy Minor. I, I just had a second to get back to you. I'm licensed with the state here in Missouri and I received your request to you put in about possible you know, but possibly looking at some different coverage options. Were you looking at anything specific or just wanting to look at all the different options? Now, 
Here, I'm neutralizing about possibly looking at different coverage options. You always wanna say options here if you're calling it a more of an age lead, and then I'm automatically in, were you looking at anything specific or just wanting to look at all the different options? They'll always say, I wanna look at all the different options. So it's an automatically getting them into saying and agreeing with me, yeah, I just wanna look at all the different options. And then I'm gonna go right in to my next question. What is the end result? Looking at different coverage options, okay? A little bit of a different tweak there. All right, let me show you a few more. Now, if you want more of these, or if you wanna learn like what questions to ask right after this, uh, you're welcome to subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel because we do a lot more trainings around kind of what to do after this that might help you. My only suggestion, if you subscribe to this channel, do not share it with people who are competing with you. So if you've got a good buddy or somebody you know that like literally is in your industry working for another company, you probably don't want them to know about any of this training on this channel. So if you are gonna share it, if you're gonna subscribe, make sure you keep it to yourself or share it with uh, friends of yours who are not in your industry. Just a word of advice there. All right, so let's say if you sell for a marketing agency and you have an inbound lead, okay? So you help uh, companies, probably smaller companies in this case, uh, could be larger, but mainly smaller companies and you help them generate maybe more leads or a higher quality lead. Look at, look at the difference here, okay? All right, so look down your notes. Okay, so it looks like, can you hear me? Can you see me, that same thing? Okay, so it looks like you booked on the calendar about looking at getting maybe a, a higher quality lead to help you guys scale the business, right? Now, if I'm selling for a marketing agency, what is in result? I'm not selling them leads. I'm selling them what? The results of what the leads do, which is to help scale the business. That's what you're selling, about getting a higher quality lead to help scale the business, right? Every business owner would say, yeah, right. You don't wanna say, looks like you booked on the counter about getting a higher quality lead, right? Some people will be like, yeah, 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 I'm just kind of looking around. You wanna sell the end result of what you're doing. In this case, scaling the business. Okay, let me show you another one. Let's say, okay, I'm gonna show you a difference here. Let's say if you go meet in the home, or let's say if you meet in an office, maybe you're, you're selling uh, maybe Enterprise or SMB and you're meeting them at the office. There's gonna be some different tweaks to both of those. Let's say you sell HVAC, huge industry we train, as well as you know marketing agencies, huge industry we train as well. So let's say you sell HVAC and you're coming out to their home for an appointment, okay? Okay, so you know you get in, all that stuff. Okay, so, okay, looks like, according to my notes, now correct me if I'm wrong, but according to my notes, looks like you had one of our technicians out here the other day, Ryan, and you had recently scheduled about looking at you know, possibly upgrading your heating, you know, cooling system to get kind of your air circulating better in the upstairs, right? See, end result. If I'm selling HVAC, what is the end result of HVAC? Up, now, possibly, I don't wanna say you had, you had asked us to come out because you were wanting to upgrade your heating and cooling system. Some people will say yes. Other people are like, well, we're still looking around. You know, we're just kind of looking around at some different options and automatically their guard just came up. You want to keep their guard down. So when I say the word looking at possibly, at possibly upgrading your heating, cooling system, then I'm going to repeat back the end result so you can get your air circulating better in the upstairs, right? They're going to be like, yeah, right. See how I'm getting them into results based thinking. That is how you build rapport in a prospect's mind. You are raising your status where they start to view you. This is the start of it. There's a lot more after it. They start to view you more as the expert or the authority because you're getting them into results-based thinking. You want to stay away from the fake rapport. How you doing today? How's your day going? Now, if the prospect says, hey, how you doing today? And they ask you, you can say, oh, you know, just hanging out, being the boring guy. What about you? I can be playful. Oh, just hanging out, you know, trying to stay out of trouble. What are you doing over there? Will you get in trouble in your neck of the woods? See, that's a playful tone, a little bit of a difference there. Hope that helped you today. If you want more training videos on what to ask after these questions, or if they say something you don't want them to say, you're welcome to subscribe to this channel. We do a lot more training on this channel for that. Hope that helped you today. Enjoy.